Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife, Melissa, and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald, and this is Morning, everyone, and welcome to today's episode. Uh, today, we're going to be doing a few things. One, uh, I'm on my way to pick up Patrick right now. He is going to be coming with me um, to do some moving. We've got to go make a pit stop at a fellow's house and buy a couple things. Yes, I'm still out buying antiques, uh, but then we're going to start moving some of the bigger fixtures over to the new location. We're not going to be able to completely move just yet, but I'm going to get a few things started and a few things uh, moved over. So off to go pick up Pat and then uh, go pick up some treasures uh, from a guy's basement. Hey, look, it's a Patrick. Ooh, I guess I should let him in. Uh, here we go. Morning, Pat. Good morning. Ready for some exciting adventures? Oh, tons, yes. <laughs> at the shop, and this is one of the cabinets that has to go today. Um, honestly, Pat, it's not gonna be much fun. Getting this thing in here, we had to take it out on kind of an angle because it's so big. It's the least favorite thing that has to go. The other one that has to go today is this big guy right there with the billiard sign on top and the billiard sign itself. Those are the two most cumbersome cabinets in the whole store, and today's the day to get them moved. Ready? Ready. Okay, got the shelves loaded up at the store. Now we are headed off to go meet a fellow named Gary who's got uh, a couple Coke machines and some other stuff that he wants to sell. Um, don't know if we'll film inside the house, but if I get them, I'll, well, let's hope we get them. I'll uh, show you what they are. One machine in, Vendo 44. There's actually two more machines. Well, one other machine in the basement and some other stuff we have to get. And since we were down in the fellow's basement, we offered to take his old TV to the recycle depot for him. Since we have a moving truck and uh, it's a little more difficult for him to get out of the basement. And we got the Coke machines loaded up. Pat, I'll come over and give you a hand. Yeah, I lost the wheel. Okay, let me, let me help you out. <laughs> hey, we're at the new store and before we start work on unloading the truck, I hear some noise happening. We'll see who it is. I recognize that voice. <laughs> is that, could it be? Is it the one and only Hens? Good day, good day. How you doing, buddy? Good, man. Long time no I see. I see you brought our other friend Patrick, too. Yeah, I got Patrick good here, day. too. Patrick. Yeah. So uh, the boys are up there taking the old uh, sheeting off. Um, so, yeah, did you have a look inside and see yeah, what there is? Yeah, that floor is kind of wet. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty gross. It's that needs definitely some repair. So what have you been up to since we worked on the house well, last? Oh, a little bit of trees, a little bit of roofing, a little bit of flooring. Well, you Pretty know, much whatever you got to do. Well, uh, if you have a minute, I'll show you what needs to be done around here. Yeah, not a problem. Okay, so this tree, hey Dakota, we just hey, we were cool. talking about safety first yesterday. Your shirt went missing somewhere along the way. Yeah, well, he was showing <laughs> off for the girls. Uh, yeah. That's what it was. So, um... <laughs> These branches here that go over the roof yeah. need to come off. Like basically I'll leave. And I was thinking probably the ones over the power line. Yeah, well if we do that, there's not gonna be much tree left, well, I don't think. That's... So it's a big beautiful tree, but it's in a terrible location by power lines and everything. So I almost wonder if we should just take it down. Uh, well, no, it's just this one branch, the lower one. Okay, so we might be able to prune it back and Exactly. I mean, anything over the roof has to go for sure. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And hey. then this was another concern. Of well, this whole thing can go. Size. This whole what? This whole tree can go. Yeah. That can go, you and then rub against your building, and eventually you're going to have damage. Oh well, so, yeah, it's already caused damage. Um, and then we're thinking about the bigger trees that are at the front there, the Carragana. Prune it Dive back. It up there, yeah. Okay, so uh, that'll be probably after this gets gutted on the inside. Yeah, look, that's um, right. I just been cleaning up and helping the boys, and then well, like I'll probably spend a night or two here, so I'll worry about that stuff on the inside in the evening or whatever. Sounds good. Patrick and I have a moving truck here. We're gonna start moving some fixtures in. We've been busy this morning. We've been at it since eight this morning. Hey, Pat. Yeah. Um, pictures. What kind of pictures you moving? <laughs> Fixtures. Fixtures. Oh, fixtures. Not oh pictures. Hey, I thought you said pictures. No, that'll be next time. 
<laughs> okay, so we're gonna get at it. Uh, but yeah, so how, how did it go in here so far? Well, that's all cleaned up. The garbage is gone. Oh yeah, garbage is gone. The uh, did you? This floor up now. Yeah, so we want to basically get it down to this these lateral slats that are underneath there. Yeah, because then we'll know what we have to repair. Well, you know, it looks like you might have more than you were intended because I think you're on dirt. Yeah. And that's never a good sign for floor choice. No. Well, we'll see once we get this up and we'll know what we're working with here. But uh, I don't know. The boys have pry bars and stuff like that, I think. I got all that there. Do you? Okay. Oh, yeah. So I'll leave you with that. Patrick and I are going to go inside. Did you have a look inside the building already? No, I haven't been in there. Oh, okay. Well, you have to come over and have a look. Aside from the two Coke machines I got, I couldn't help but bring back this that was in the fellow's basement. The Charlie Angels Hideaway House. It's like a, I don't know, very unstable beach house? Like a podium? I don't know, what do you, you barbecue and then you live up top. I don't know where that door is supposed to go. You fall off into the ocean, who knows? Anyway, it's a weird thing made by Hasbro. It's kind of cool, so I hadn't really seen one before too. Probably because it's a hugely impractical toy, but we bought it and it's ours now. You know, when you just take your old Coke machine for a walk down the road, that's what's happening here. Can't really get the truck very close because there's parking all along the front. And uh, we have that storage bin in the back, the uh, dump bin in the back, so it can't drive in the yard. So this will have to do for now. Truck is unloaded. These are all the shelves for this cabinet. The glass broke on top. We had to throw it out in the dumpster. So we are going to go to Home Depot and maybe get a piece of plywood so we can build a new top, which is fine because this goes on top now anyway. It doesn't really need to be glass. Uh, look at all this stuff. But by the end of today, hopefully I'll have it all put together. But I got to tell the guys, Patrick and I are headed out. Hey guys, Patrick and I are headed out to go get another load. Up for a quick pit stop to pick up some... I guess we'll need the plywood to be finished nicely on one side, the side that's facing up. Got to fix that countertop when we get back. We might run into uh, my father-in-law, Patrick's former father-in-law. Might be here, we'll see. I'm just checking out the Hans Mobile here. <laughs> and I see Hans has been busy ripping up the floor. We can definitely see we've got some weak spots here. Uh, how's it been going over here? Well, it's not too bad, other than I almost fell through here. Oh, Actually, yeah. I did fall through and I caught myself. Well, at least it's not but, a hundred foot uh, drop. You gotta be careful. It's only there. like a foot maybe down, so it's... It's not too bad. <laughs> not like a guy could get hurt. No, true. Well, unless you fell on all these nails that are sticking up here. Um, uh, if it would have been deeper down, uh, chances are you might have. Well, and Josh and Dakota left to go probably go get materials and lunch, you said, right? I see they've either started turning this into a prison cell or they're getting ready to frame that in, which is the actual case, because we're deleting that one window um, because it's alley side, just for safety. You don't really need it there. This is the one we put in the other day. And then uh, we're taking out that little window over there, which they've already got out too. So they probably went to go get plywood or something. I'll check with them when they're back. Uh, Patrick and I have a moving truck to unload. That's what we're doing. Okay, been moving, so I haven't been filming myself moving. Probably should have set that up. Anyway, Patrick and I, and Harry has joined us. My friend Harry, who has a motorcycle repair business for all your motorcycle needs, um, are helping me move. So we've got the bottom of the cabinet in here. Um, we're gonna go and get the top, put it on top a little bit. You can see it overlaps a little bit with the window, but I think it's just gonna be at the right spot. So I think we're gonna be okay there. Even if we get it on top, we can cheat it over just a little bit so it clears that window frame. Should be perfect. There we go. One billiard sign. I can't really center it much more than that because it has the brackets built onto it still. Right here. So I can't go over too much more and I don't really want to cut it because somebody might eventually buy that and want to rehang it. But it's up and out of the way. I light it up and make sure it still works. Patrick has just plugged it in to test it out and it still works, thank goodness, because that was super expensive to get that uh, built up, get it repaired. 
I actually found this in a field with my dad, one of my very first YouTube videos from a couple of years ago. That billiard sign was in a farm field. If you go back to my, my, my history of videos, you'll find it as one of the early ones. Okay, I need a tape measure. So the last thing Josh and Dakota are gonna do for me today, because they've been busy working on the other side, is cutting down a new piece of plywood for me to go on top of this cabinet. Do um, you think it needs braces in there? Uh, yeah. At least it needs braces. Needs a little bit. What is this? So the idea is to cut this down, make a little platform on top. I did have glass there before. It was cracked. The move did it in, sadly. And then this has to go on top. Okay, I am gonna go return the rental van. I'm gonna go return the Patrick. Because they're both hourly. <laughs> I thought you'd cut it in two pieces. What you thought? Yeah. What? I thought you cut it laterally, or you cut it horizontally to get your sections and then you just do two parts, one, one in there and one there. You good? It's not like a, it's a four by eight, not a four by 10, which is what we need. Okay, the cabinet's on the red wall. Starting to go in nicely. I've got to do a little bit of wood stain there. The guy's finished up sturdying up the top for me. And then I could start getting some of the clutter off the floor, yikes. That doesn't look so good. Still another hour and a half or so worth of work and then uh, off home to see the missus. Starting to get some of the product on the shelves here. These are some of the whimsical retro toys and some actual vintage ones that we have. I thought I'd bring those down. Have to get the cupboard doors back on. Some of them need repair after the move. Uh, but my pile's a lot smaller than what it was. Starting to get all the old drawers put back in the cabinet. And I noticed, I didn't notice this before, that this one's signed. It looks like W.H. Hope. Could be the person that built these cabinets or who knows. Kind of neat. And most of these are numbered on the back or on the side and you have to kind of find the corresponding spot because they're not all exactly the same. This would have been a custom built piece of furniture and you want to make sure you put the right drawers in the right spot and just hope that they fit. I forgot I had so many patterns in here. This lady looks like she's knitted herself into a nun. I guess it goes to show that knitting can become a bad habit. Well, Josh and Dakota are gone. There's a tornado warning in effect for our area. It is really warm. It's probably in the high 80s in Fahrenheit, about 30 degrees Celsius. Um, so the guys are gone. Hans is gonna stick around and uh, clean up for a little bit. So I'm gonna say goodnight to him and then head back home. Probably getting home at just the right time. This does not look like a friendly storm. It's brewing over our neighborhood right now. Melissa's not a fan of thunderstorms, so she'll probably be glad that I'm home. Never a good sign when the clouds start turning brown. Those are gonna be some pretty heavy hail clouds, I think. Hopefully the old cars stay in good shape tonight. We'll have to see in the morning. Holy cow! The hail is the size of golf balls out there. Oh it's just starting to come down. Do you see that? Do you see that bouncing? Oh, they're exploding. The you can hear them. You can hear it out. thudding on the house. That is not going to be good for our cars. That's not as big as Sarah got. Well, we just started getting hail. It's. I have. I don't think I remember seeing hail that big. Look at that one. That one. That. Oh, that one's like the size of a snowball. That was like a four-inch piece of hail that just fell. Not making me feel any better. <laughs> oh, oh no. We're not the only ones but who are going to have this problem. No. Window, Sometimes you just, there's nothing you can do. Uh, we'll go down to the basement if it gets really bad. Yep. And so far, this is pretty awesome. That is that not. Hit the window. That well, is our different. siding could get wrecked. Our. Oh. Whoa. Saw that. Hey. Yeah. There's nowhere to put our vehicles right now that's safe. Our garage is completely full. I have nowhere to bring stuff in. <laughs> Melissa ran outside to get the big piece of hail. Okay, bring it over to the side. Bring it over to the side. Excuse me. It's already melting. This is the big one? Yeah. Holy cow. Look at how 
know, it forms. Look, that is next to a cup. Oh, a little cup. Well, still. But that's like to our hand even. Yeah, this is my hand. To an Abigail hand, it's like the same, but well, not so close Mom's to camera. Mom's opening a meal. Gross, okay, I'm putting it over there. That's so gross. That is not good when hail that size is coming down. Oops. Okay, the hail has stopped for now. Let's see what we have. That's not, that's not great. Let's see if any of these hit Melissa's car. Yeah, we got one dent there. Luckily, that's not too bad. I can't tell yet in the rain. <laughs> Surprisingly, her hood doesn't look too bad. Oh, I got some, I got a few dentaroonies on the, on the beamer. Roof is mainly all glass on this car. We'll know more in the morning, but definitely a little bit of hail damage. The morning after the storm, uh, our cars and our trees saw a little bit of damage. Um, did get a few dents, but overall everything fared pretty well. Hopefully we don't get another storm like that tonight. I checked on my ambulance. It looks like it's in pretty good shape still, so no worries there. I'm off this morning to go and check on the general store, make sure the property's okay, and to see how Hans is doing because he spent the night at the store as my, uh, my gatekeeper. <laughs> we'll check and see what progress he made last night. I hear sounds. Well, good morning, hey. Hans. <laughs> You've been busy ripping up. How was that oh. storm last night for you? Well, the freaking hailstones like that, man. Oh, oh close size. <laughs> I know, we, we got hit our, uh, did your truck get all dented up? No, it don't look too bad, but. Yeah, ours, uh, my ambulance was okay. Melissa's car got dented and my car got oh. dented. That yeah. sucks. Yeah, it was bad. So I see you're hard at it this morning here. Oh, this is a pain, the stuff that's not been wet. Oh, it's worse than getting the soggy stuff Oh yeah, up. the soggy stuff went really good. Well, yeah, we're getting down. Well, there's just, you know, a little bit left to go here. Not too much more to go. And yeah, it looks like they nailed it pretty much every inch or two inches. It's crazy. But I uh, appreciate you putting the work in. No, it's good. You think we'll get to cutting down some trees today? Well, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Oh yeah, well me too. Put on a show for the client, for your uh, viewers, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> hopefully the show isn't you falling out of a tree again. No, 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 we don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> but today I've brought in a bunch of soapstone sculptures and things because I want to do this case over here uh, to have a lot of art inside of it. Um, so I'm going to start unloading my car and well, I've got a lot of cleanup to do in here still too. There's stuff kind of all over the floor that I've been sorting. Uh, electrician's coming in about 45 minutes, so I've got to get this place ready so he can do his work too. Soapstone sculptures are um, indigenous to the peoples of the north, so from uh, the Arctic area. Original soapstone sculptures uh, that they would have used for their own purposes would be quite small because they're nomadic. They travel with um, with their food, basically, they'd, they'd have to move around. So they wouldn't want to carry a big 10, 15 pound uh, chunk of stone with them. They would have been very small. But later, as people discovered them and they became works of art, um, they got made bigger and bigger. So people collect these. Um, it's beautifully hand carved and uh, generally uh, locally or, or almost locally made. We have a, a a stone carver that uh, comes in sees us and brings us these wonderful little things every so often so we're gonna make sure to do a nice display and uh, get them you know proudly presented here. Indigenous art is beautiful and well crafted we love finding it when we can and bring it in the shop from beaded moccasins to baskets to sculptures um, amazing artists that have passed on their traditions for centuries uh, it's just one of the wonderful things that we see here in Canada and many parts of North America uh, that I love carrying in the shop. So the electricians are here. In fact, they're down in the basement, which is kind of like a, well, more than a crawl space. It's a, it's a basement. Uh, we're getting a couple plugs installed in the floor today. Uh, reason being uh, that I want to be able to put showcases and have things that can light up and I don't want to run cables across the floor. So I'm looking at getting two installed, one kind of back there and one a little bit closer. 
That way, um, when I do my showcase in the middle, we can plug directly in, or if I decide to put my Zoltar or something like that right in the middle, um, we'll be able to do that without uh, having any hindrances to our customers getting around the shop. Um, they're just having a look and checking it out, and hopefully they'll get started. It means we'll have to drill into the floor though, which is kind of a bummer, but um, it's all for the greater good. Goodbye with the house. Electricians are here working on getting the plates in. Oh, is that where I said to put it? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> They've removed a chunk of floor, but uh, this is the hardwood. Look how thick this floor is. I swear, but is it a bomb shelter down there that you're gonna be protected from nuclear fallout from you know five layers of plywood? This is crazy. Have you ever seen a floor that thick before? No, that's that's very thick. These look like 1970s platform shoe soles. You can put them right <laughs> on the bottom there. And... Nuts. Well, as they are busy working away, I've emptied off this counter. I think it's going to become more of a library sort of idea over here. And I've moved my toy department over here, which I actually uh, like quite a bit better because then I can fill these bins full of stuffed animals and soon to be Hot Wheels and things like that. Um, so I think it'll be kind of nice. Plus kids like to be kind of, you know, near the front of a shop where there's windows and light and parents can see them. So it's a good spot for the toys. When I was in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island, I picked up this antique book press. Now, I uh, found out I had family on the island and thankfully they were coming to Edmonton and brought it with them because it's pretty darn heavy, it's about 60 pounds. But I think I've got the perfect spot for it. Right on top of my antique bookcase. Next up for me, I've got a window cling I'm gonna stick on my front door here. It has to get adhered to the glass. Make sure that there's no bubbles or crinkles. I'm gonna clean it, then I'm gonna razor blade it, and then I'm gonna clean it once more. You can hear all the little clicking sound. That's debris and stuff that's left on the door. Could be from dead flies, could be whatever. Uh, paint spatter. I don't want it on there because it's gonna make it so my sticker doesn't go in properly. So I'm gonna go over the whole thing until it's perfectly smooth. Then I'm gonna clean it one more time. And yes, you can use a razor blade. I'm just using a box cutter removed from its sheath very carefully, but you can use a razor blade. It will not scratch your glass. And what am I putting up? This, my store hours, my information for how to breach us. It's gonna go in the window. And the nerve wracking thing about putting something like this up is that if you get it crooked or if you get a bubble in it, you have to order a whole new one. It's very difficult to take these off and reapply. So I'm gonna to have to be extra careful today when I get this thing put on. You soak the window a little bit with some warm soapy water and you're gonna squeegee this out. And once you get it in place, you wanna make sure that you squeegee out any bubbles and you wanna work from the middle out. I'm just using an old uh, credit card that I have, but they actually make proper rubber squeegees for this, which are very inexpensive, but this is what I'm using today and it does do the trick. So see this giant bubble there? You just kind of work it, you walk it all the way to the edge and out because you want to have it nice and clear. But there's another little bubble, I don't know if you can see it, right there. I'm gonna walk it over, right off the edge, like that. I'm gonna keep going until I have them all done. There, now to see how it looks from the other side. There we go, well. Okay, well, that's what you'd expect. Your hours, your name on the door, give people an idea of when you're around and it's not uh, too in your face. What is gonna be in your face is <laughs> when I get the giant uh, store name painted on the roof later. And he should actually be here. It's gonna be, well, he said about one o'clock, so another 30 minutes or so, and uh, Dave should be here. So this has sort of a rubbery backing on it. Is that um, waterproofing or? Yeah. When you, and it's like a weather tight seal. So there's one underneath here. Yep. Stop anything going into the basement. And then um, there's one here to stop any uh, water actually getting down to where the wires are. If you or something out to spill something on the edge there. Well, it's gonna be perfect for a floor. Yeah. Josh is back and we are working on venting the heat ducts through the fixtures because they're sitting on top of the old registers. So what's the plan? All right, well, since you got me to cut the hole on the first day when we had it over there and then we kind of changed our mind, what we're gonna do is we're gonna reroute with a series of uh, whatever these are called, some hose fittings and blah, 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 and make it come up the same hole. Luckily, the way these are designed, it'll fit behind that 
and it'll, it'll route nicely without being in the way. So these will be able to completely co close and open and all that stuff. Perfect, and then it's gonna exit on the cabinet, which is yes. uh, different because when this place was built, the registers come up straight from the floor like right. a normal house. Yeah, Yeah. so we have some. More, we have another different part that's gonna come up. Yeah, it, it'll work, it'll be okay. good. And we're doing the same thing over on this side too, which Dakota's kind of feeding the Yeah, this one's different in. though because but it's all gonna work out good. Nice. Hans has been back here, busy working away, getting the uh, old rotted subfloor out. And actually, you can't smell it on camera, but it smells good now. It was musty and gross. This wood starting to dry out. I can see it's not nearly as soggy as it was before. So that's starting to feel good. We'll start ripping out these boards and replacing those after it dries a bit. Um, I have to run out and figure out what type of fixture I'm going to put up here because uh, after the weekend I've got a different electrician coming who's going to work on this room. So i got to have my lights ready to go. I did have some old porcelain ones, but they are, boy, they're just too, they're going to come down too far. So I don't want them, anybody to hit their head on them. So see if I can find something that looks similar, old fashioned and garage like. You know how we were talking about on YouTube where there's like the, the gold digger videos and then there's yeah. the car crash ones? Yeah. Have you ever noticed that all those car crash videos where there's like the worst wreck you've ever seen? Like it's all like in Russia or something? Yeah. It's yeah. like, you know, it's in Europe and like some guy zooms by his motorcycle at like 500 miles an hour and then, you know, like hits a semi and he backflips like Spider Man or something. Yeah. You ever that one where he goes on top of that car? Yeah, that was sweet. Yeah, it's always like in Russia or like Ukraine or Poland or something. <laughs> Those people are nuts. And I'm part, I can say that because I'm part Russian, Polish, and Ukrainian. And I don't drive like that though. <laughs> okay, the guys are working on getting the vents in, the electricians are over there getting the floor plates in. Did you did you guys tie it into the panel already too? Yeah, we just got to test it and it should be good to go. Whoa, that's coming along. Okay, we'll check on that in a second. Uh, Josh has got uh, this panel. I made this thing a while back just to kind of be a gap filler. It'll do the trick. And I see the nice duct work. That's coming together nice. So that way we don't have to modify the floor uh, in case this cabinet ever had to move. It's very easy to undo what we've done here. But it'll vent it nicely out the front and uh, we'll get some good heat flow coming out here. That looks awesome, Josh. I think it'll work. All right, I had a special guest. My father-in-law, Dave, came by for a visit. But wait, there's not one, but there's two Daves. So this is uh, my friend Dave, uh, who's a wonderful sign painter and artist. And you do pinstriping too, right? I do. You do it all. Um, and we brought Dave in. Well, we brought this Dave in. This one's just hanging out. Yeah, and I'm just coming down. Actually, maybe you can go for lunch with me after you got time. Uh, this, this Dave, we're going to have a look outside, and I'll show you what I need your help with. Okay, there's only few people in town in the entire province that have your skill set and what we need to do is a cool storefronted sign up top there. So you've got some ideas for me? I do. Yeah. Uh, my wife gives me all my ideas lately. Oh, she's been helping you out with the concepts? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Aren't wives the best? They are. Mercantile. Oh, I see in the font you're thinking is that old timey general. Yeah. So yeah, that's fine. I was going to ask you about that. It's actually called a Quentin. Um, but uh, there's a lot of different variations of it, you know, and you can add flourishes here and there and uh, jazz it up as much as you want without hopefully screwing up your legibility. Right. That's a big thing because it's got to be readable. But if we did this uh, with merchants, yeah, I guess. Just merchant. Merchant. Okay. Yeah. And that lower font doesn't look as fancy as the top font. Um, yuck, yuck, yuck. <laughs> what I was trying to do there is get a little bit of segregation without losing the legibility and get people to focus on obviously number one, mm -hmm. number two, and then number three. But basically, what you are your name and your specialties. Okay, now would you would you do this in a, like would you outline it? Yeah, absolutely. And what, what would be the, the middle color, like what would the color scheme be? Well, if we were gonna start this, we're working on kind of an olive background there, creamy. I cream guess cream color, yeah. Word. Do it in a nice strong color, like say a black, and then pick an outline color uh, that's gonna go with the building to kind of set it off, and then play on those colors 
or essentially the colors that would be complementary to them with these three in order of legibility. Right. Now, my only concern is that when I look at the color palette from back in the day, everything's black and white. I haven't seen a single movie from 1910 where it's in color, so That's... I guess we only have two black, white, and gray to choose from. Well, from the sounds of things, Hedge is done in here. The guy's got the door on. Caught on the tarp. Well, that's a big improvement already. Oh, big time. You can see the side of the building again yeah, after who knows how long. Yeah, that one. That's it for tonight. Gonna call it a night. Josh and Dakota are off for a little while. They've got another job out in another area because they don't just work with me. They do all kinds of other stuff too. Um, Hans and I are gonna work on the addition tomorrow. He's gonna be tearing down some more trees, finishing that up. And sign painter Dave should be back on Monday. It got a little bit too windy and stormy today for him to get up and uh, paint the sign. But he should be coming back on Monday to do that. So that'll be uh, the next update there. But I started getting some shelves rearranged, some stock set up. I have to clean off the top of those showcases. I'll probably do that tomorrow or the next day. A long day. It is nice to start seeing some items come into the shop. Oh, I took the bookcase from that area, decided I didn't like it there, and uh, put it over here. Next to the, uh, this is gonna be sort of like a um, merchandised bookcase, bookshelf kind of idea. I thought, well, it'd be much nicer to have it there. So that's in place. The uh, billiard sign is back and working. The showcase is getting set up. I even have to get uh, some glass cut as we had a couple little whoopsies happen, but I have time to get that done. But it is starting to come together and um, I have plugs in the floor, which is handy because I was using it for vacuuming. All in all, really pleased with the work that happened in the last couple days here. And I'm sure it's gonna get even better in the next day to come. I think that sidewalk's been buried for a while. Yeah, it, it definitely... goes all the way around that way. It looks like they had it going from the garage, running up the side of the house. And then down there and it's just been that tree was there for so long it created a layer of dirt over top of it that was gone <laughs> it's gone no more sidewalk it's like the atlantis of sidewalks i see hans was busy back here to finish up this morning he got them all stacked up nice too we're going to take some of this home and use it as firewood but uh no more are the trees going over top of the roof trimmed it right back i mean we wanted to save the tree so it's a little funny, <laughs> a little bit funny looking right now because it's been trimmed back, but at least we saved it and it won't destroy our roof anymore. You can see the damage that was done up there. This is much more open. I'm gonna give Melissa the royal tour of the inside here too. After a long, hard day, I thought I'd take hands out with me. <laughs> it was right there. <laughs> We're gonna go to a Brazilian steakhouse. Unlimited salad bar? Yes, please. And since I'm avoiding uh, sugars and breads, there's actually quite a bit to choose from here. It'll keep me full other than the meat. And they're serving up heads of garlic, which I've taken like probably five heads of garlic. Melissa's not gonna be happy with me. <laughs> <laughs> they walk by with these skewers of meat, different types pretty much the whole time. When someone walks up with one that I don't want, I almost feel like I'm rejecting them. Like it's not, it's not you, it's the skewer. <laughs> Uh, so a little bit of guilt there. Um, but yeah, definitely a lot of food at these places. Ooh. Very How? unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> With the amount of meat or the... Well, the service is fantastic. The amount of meat, everything is good. Yeah, these people just walk around with skewers of meat like the entire night. 
But where does the meat keep coming from? Is it the same skewer? They just walk around until somebody takes it. So they notice it starts off like rare and then by the end it's like well done. So maybe it keeps getting cooked the longer it sits there. Who knows? It's a mystery. It's a meat mystery. With a full stomach, I send Hans on his way. We call it a night and we'll be back again soon. Next episode, we start tearing into the exterior of the building to get the sign painted on the front and a special reproduction advertisement painted on the side wall. So stay tuned for that. I have to give a big shout out to Patrick, Josh, Jakota, to our good friend Hans the Viking, and to our friends the electricians for coming to help us out. Everybody worked so hard on this episode. Really appreciate all your work. So stay tuned as we continue to recreate a hundred year old general store for our antique shop. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and check us out on Instagram and Facebook under Curiosity Incorporated. Bye for now.